to the non-uniform sphere. I'll go through it relatively quickly because you kind of see the pattern now. It'll be similar to the non-uniform uh, cylinder. So let's again assume the density increases as a function of R, kappa R. So you again you start with di, rr. So I'm going to do the version where I do single integral. I do the moment of inertia about the center. And then whatever answer I get, I take two thirds of that. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, uh, integral r squared dm rho dv and integrate this irr equals uh, integral r squared and then I uh, have kappa r 4 pi r squared dr. This is the volume of a spherical shell and kappa r is the uh, mass density, volume mass density. Then you have 4 pi kappa r to the fifth dr from 0 to r okay 4 pi kappa r to the sixth over 6 then again I do a uh, integral for the mass m which is again similar to what I did for the cylinder I did two integrals so I have m is in equal to integral dm rho dv kappa r 4 pi r squared dr. Again, the only thing different here between this integral and that integral is that this is missing the r squared, okay? So again, you have m equal four pi kappa r to the fourth over four. Again, I'm gonna substitute four pi kappa is equal to 4m over r to the fourth, right? Four goes over there, r to the fourth goes down, substitute that over there. Four m over r to the fourth, r to the sixth over six, then you get what? Two thirds m r squared. Then what do you do? You use that, um, theorem that says IXX is always two-thirds of whatever the IRR is, right? So what's IXX going to equal? Two-thirds of IRR, which is going to be two-thirds of two-thirds, which is four-ninths IRR, okay? So if you race this down the hill with a uniform solid sphere, what's going to happen? Well, uniform solid sphere was... Two fifths mr squared, right? That's a ratio of 0.4. This is a ratio of 0.444, right? So of course this is harder to rotate than that. So the uniform solid sphere will win. Okay. So similar with the uh, cylinder, if this increases more rapidly, if I put power three, power four, power five, the moment of inertia should continue to grow. If it decreases as a function of r, r to the minus 1, r to the minus 2, the moment of inertia should be less than the uniform uh, sphere, right? We can apply this actually to planets. Think about planets. For example, the Earth. Okay? Treat the Earth as a sphere. Is the Earth uniform density or other planets? No. The heavier, denser material when a planet forms uh, sinks to the bottom, right? The bottom has, of the Earth has a density of roughly 7 to 8 gram per cubic centimeter. It's made of iron and other heavy elements. The surface of the Earth has a density of 3 gram per cubic centimeter, roughly 3, or, uh, three to 3.5 three because it's made of more rocky material. And most other planets are like that too. The heavier elements sink to the bottom. So if we were to model the Earth as a sphere and write a density function, what kind of a function would we have to write down? Well, we have to write down some kind of function, the density, something like, let's say it's linearly decreasing function, it'll be m r plus b, right? If it's a linearly decreasing function, the density when the 
R is zero, starts out at seven, let's say, gram per cubic centimeter. So the y-intercept will be seven. And by the time the, uh, the R is equal to big R, the density decreases to three. So let's just assume for the sake of argument that the density of the Earth decreases linearly from seven to three in a distance of R. What would be the slope? The slope would be called the uh, three minus seven over R, right? So it's a negative slope. So that would be negative four over R. Negative four over R. So this could be a linearly decreasing function modeling the density of the Earth. So we could actually put that into this function, rho sub R, into this function right here, and perform a similar calculation. Negative four over R, R plus seven, uh, put it into this density, get some kind of integral, but then you have to integrate it twice. You have to do this integral for IRR, you have to do the mass integral for the, uh, the Earth, and the final moment of inertia you get for the Earth should be something mR squared, some constant times its mass times R squared. That constant should be less than the moment of inertia of a uniform sphere because the Earth should more easily rotate than the uniform sphere. Why? Most of its mass is concentrated in the inside. Less mass is concentrated on the outside, right? So that constant is going to be something less than 2 fifths, which is 0.4, right? So maybe it's going to be something like 0 0.3, 0 0.33, 0 0.35, something like that. So try out that integral, see what you get. And then you can look up uh, Google or something, you can see exactly uh, what is the function of the density of the Earth, come up with the exact function, and then from there calculate the actual moment of inertia of the Earth. So you will see that it is less than the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Okay? Thank you.